The tax landscape today is incredibly complex and CTOs and heads of tax, wherever they're really based in the world, need to navigate that complex environment. In terms of what tools CTOs and heads of tax have to help them navigate this complexity, I think one of the great tools is our benchmarking survey. It looks at the activities and the thinking of heads of tax and CTOs across multinational organisations around the world and offers an insight into their evolving structure, governance, priorities and performance and the use of technology and much more. In terms of disruptors that tax leaders mentioned in the survey that they've really been grappling with, the first one is tax reform, whether that's domestically or globally, how you think about the financial impact of that, how you think about structures, how you respond to questions from the C-suite and the board about the impact of that tax reform and where it's heading. The other mentions M&A activity. Over the last six months, we've seen M&A activity become a bit more anemic um, globally. But when people responded to the survey, there was quite a deal of activity. And I think staying on top of that resourcing it appropriately and dealing with risk issues that arise in M&A transactions was front of mind. And then I think the final one, and it really is a challenge which I expect in future years will be the top of the agenda, and that is data and technology. How do I make best use of my data? How do I house my data thoughtfully? How do I give permission to the relevant people to use that data thoughtfully in the manner in which the company is comfortable with. And then I think how do I deploy data not simply to drive efficiency, but do more with less. Ensure that I get a greater level of assurance in terms of my compliance and regulatory filings. And how do I also think about changes in technology from a tax perspective when the company may well be going through a finance or a technology transformation in other parts of the business. In terms of how functions are most commonly structured, there were some interesting insights from the survey. Two thirds of our respondents indicated that they have a direct reporting line to the CFO. So I think that's important in terms of a, a reporting line to the C-suite, and it's from a strategic input perspective, but also an elevation of the function. So I think, I think that was one of the key things that came out of the survey. And then there's this question as to how you might organise your particular function. There's different views on that. There's a hybrid model where you have people with deep expertise on a particular type of tax, whether that's VAT, direct tax, trade and customs, for example. Combined with a close connection with a business unit or a particular function of the business, there's an acknowledgement within the heads of tax and the respondents to the survey that that understanding of business issues and close connection with the business is really important to drive value and ensure that you're relevant to the business. At least 25% of the respondents talked about some form of co-source or outsource. All are a significant portion of the functions and responsibilities. And I think that will continue to be a trend going forward, especially if you think about the continued capital requirement for investments in technology and, and, and how that technology not only drives efficiency, but also drives greater assurance. In terms of what outcomes the functions are commonly aligning their strategies to, the survey really identified three. Value creation. The second one was really risk mitigation or minimization. And then the third one was really cost efficiency. So if we just talk about those three for a second. Value creation, I think there's always been this focus on how does the function create value for the business and be seen to pay its way and not necessarily be a blocker to what the business is trying to achieve. And that can be, um, that can occur during diff via different mechanisms. I can be a real partner to the business if there's a transaction or some new contract being signed, I work closely with them. It could be from the really insightful use of data that's collected um, you know, globally in terms of my compliance obligations. And so that value creation focus is really 
really something that lands on the shoulders of the CTO or the head of tax, and that comes out in the survey. The second one was, of course, risk minimization and mitigation. Boards and the C-suite do not want surprises in terms of unrecorded liabilities or audits that go awry. And I think being on top of those matters, especially when you're in a multinational organization, is something that also lands heavily on the CTO's shoulders um, or the heads of tax shoulders. And then I think finally, and this is not solely a matter, I think, for the tax function, it, it, it occurs across all the functions within modern corporates, and that is cost efficiency. How do I deploy technology in a smart way to drive efficiency? How do I deliver what I need to deliver for a, for a lower cost base? And I think that pressure is there. For about a quarter of the respondents, being an effective business partner was the primary strategy. Together with the result for value creation, this suggests that about half of the respondent companies are now looking to their tax function to play a more strategic role in business planning and decision making. In terms of what, what are the key metrics that came out of the survey, there was really three key ones. The first one was risk mitigation or minimization. So really what was being said there by the CTOs or the heads of tax was we don't want any surprises, we wanna be across our issues. The second key metric was the tax function supports the corporate strategy. So how do you partner with the business? How do you ensure that you're not necessarily a blocker to that corporate strategy, that you're appropriately managing risk, but, but in a sense supporting where the business wants to head? in an appropriate tax manner, and that came out clearly through the survey. And then of course, the other one, which is really part of the risk environment in which we live, and that is that our tax compliance filings and deadlines are met. There really is a clear focus on meeting deadlines and raising issues up the chain when they're not being met. So that's another key um, metrics that, that, that is being used. In terms of what role tax functions can play in driving the ESG agenda, the survey had some uh, really interesting insights in that regard. 56% of the chief tax officers surveyed said that their company has a policy that considers the ESG consequences of tax-related business decisions. And about one in five have basically said their tax ESG policy is robust and it highlights the company's tax risk appetite, governance and control. So I, I anticipate over coming years those percentages will increase. One of the questions asked of the CTOs was how organisations are benefiting from tax transformation initiatives. The top benefits that come out in the survey are reduced process cycle time or effort. So the reduced time on data manipulation um, you know, population of regulatory filings, just dealing with that entire compliance process each year, even, even collating information for the purposes of a review or audit, really does drive efficiency and allows you to deploy resources elsewhere. The second one was improved data management and what comes from that is greater insight um, and greater opportunity for the function to really drive value for the, for the business more generally. Then the interesting one, which was admittedly the third one, um, so was a reduction in tax liability. So that ability to potentially, because of the transformation initiative, see ahead and see what's around the corner and plan for that appropriately. The constant theme that came through the survey was data and how you manage it and how you leverage it. In our technology solutions, we're leaning heavily into that to help our clients navigate that, that world of data ingestion, storage, manipulation, data analytics, and how you drive insights and value. And in terms of leveraging the data in more strategic ways, a few things came out in the survey. Time constraints, um, a lack of process standardization was a key limitation. If I think about the multiple ERP systems that a number of CTOs mentioned in terms of having to deal with. So I think there's some of the limitations that they're grappling with. In terms of where anyone can view the survey, 
please go to kpmg.com stroke tax benchmarking. You can download the survey from the KPMG website. And I would encourage any tax leader who's not participated yet in the survey to take part. Have a look at your own tax function, see how it compares with your peers, and in a sense, get started on that journey of thinking strategically about the future.